Hello everyone, welcome to the third video of chapter 6. So now we will formulate the Gomery cutting plane algorithm. So first step, we introduce some notation. Let's say a number A is given. We now write the following. If we put a bracket around A, this means we take the integer part of A that is smaller than A, such that this integer part of A is less than or equal to A. So if A is an integer, then this will simply equal A. Otherwise, we'll have A minus integer part of A. This becomes the fractional part of A. So pay attention, we did not specify the sign of the A. Let's take some examples. First example, now let's say A equal 3.25. The integer part of A is 3. And then A minus the integer part is the fractional part is 0 0.25. A second example, probably more interesting. Let's say A is negative 3.25. Then what is the integer part of A? Well, it should be less than A. So here it actually becomes negative 4. Okay, and then A minus integer part of A is negative 3.25 minus negative 4 gives me 0 0.75. So pay close attention to this second example. When you have a negative number, it's quite different. So with this definition, and then we know that the fractional part would always be non-negative, bigger than or equal to zero, and it's strictly less than one. Okay, so this relation holds for any A you put in. Okay, now we go into the Gomery's cutting plane algorithm. In particular, we talk about the step of adding a new constraint on how to do that. Okay. So you select a row in the final tableau where the right-hand side bi is not an integer. So we picked one. So we write out the equation for this row. So all the coefficients a will be multiplied by the xj and add them up equals the right-hand side b. And now we are going to split all the coefficients into the integer part and the fractional part. And we're going to denote the fractional parts with some shorter notation. So for the coefficient a, the fractional part, we call it fij. And then for the vector b, the fractional part, I call it gi. So this is shorter to write. So with this notation, basically, I can write A now as the integer part plus the fractional part. And I can write the B also as the integer part plus the fractional part. And remember, the fractional parts are non-negative and less than 1. Okay, put all these notation into this uh, equation star here. And then we have this. So basically, I just put this for A and put this for B. After doing that, I'm going to rearrange. I will keep the integer part on one side and the fractional part on the other. Okay, so this is what I get. So all the fractional parts on the left-hand side and the integer parts on the right-hand side. Okay, so here I repeat that relation, and then I call this part the left-hand side, and I call this part the right-hand side. And let's have some discussion, similar to what we have done. So we know first the right-hand side is integral, because they're all integers. And then the left-hand side equal to that, so it also has to be integral. And let's take a look at the left-hand side. And we know the fractional part is non-negative. And then we know all the x are restricted. 
and then this G also is li lies between, the GI is between 0 and 1. So this part is non-negative, so we conclude the left-hand side is bigger than this negative GI, which is bigger than negative 1, strictly. Then this tells us the smallest integer value this left-hand side can take is 0. Okay, So you've heard me say that before through the example. Now we talk about it in a general setting. Okay, so now we add a new constraint. We introduce a new variable that's restricted and integral, and then we set the left-hand side equal to that. That is, I can rearrange the terms such that I can move this to join the xn plus 1 and keep the gi negatively on the left-hand side. So basically, this, the red one, will be the final um, new constraint that we will add. And here, x and plus 1 can be used as a basic variable. Okay, so um, pay attention to um, the form of this. It takes the fractional part of, um, um, but, um, of all the coefficients here, but... Um, make it negative. And it takes the fractional part of the right-hand side, B, but keep it negative. Okay, so don't forget the negative sign. Okay, so a little bit of theoretical results or the lack of it. So for the convergence of such an algorithm is really hard to prove. So we're not going to touch that. Okay? Okay. So then there's a question remains. So um, in cases, you could have multiple choices of rows to choose. As our example, multiple bi's are not integer. So which one do you pick? So experience says, we're not going to prove it. Experience just says, you can choose the one with the largest fractional part of the bi. That give you the more correction and the hopefully convergence faster also from experience. Okay, so um, this is the algorithm and uh, next time we'll take an example again to solidify our understanding of it. So hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you next time.